Okay, today is a review for the test, and uh, we have one one thing that we're going to look at differently. It's not like it's a new problem. It's just a different way to do one of those problems where we give you a high spot and a low spot, and we ask you to write the sinusoidal for it. So that's the main goal for today, uh, is get across a different way to look at sinusoidals and to review for the test. So one of the things that we'd expect you to know for the test is what does cosine look like in the first place? So I'm going to make a mark here and here, and we need to know that that's one and negative one to start with. And then I like to think of it as kind of four parts to making your cosine graph. There we go. And then I got to number it with its originals, 2 pi, pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And then I got to do some changes because there's a 3 here. That makes this a 3 and that a 3. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. And the next step is this 5. Things that are on the inside you don't trust, so you don't think to yourself, oh, I'm going to multiply everything by 5. You go, oh, I should multiply by 1 fifth. 1 fifth here, and a 1 fifth here, and a 1 fifth there. Pi over 10, 2 pi over 10, 3 pi over 10, and 4 pi over 10. Yeah, I know, it's 2 pi over 5, but I like to count them up so that I can see it's consistent. If that's pi over 10, then this should be 2 pi over 10, 3 and 4 pi over 10. Any questions on that? Okay. Could it be more difficult than that on the test? Of course. What are some other things we could do to make it more challenging? Yes? Go to the right or left or up or down. All right. So let's say I went like this. Notice I factored it for you already and did this. But what if you, could you do it if I made you factor it? Let's see. For a second right now, if I just had to do this, I'd move it. What does that mean? To the right, pi over 2. And a lot of kids ask, can I just renumber this? No, because then 0, 0 won't be 0, 0 anymore. And you may notice, even though I changed things, 0, 0 was still 0, 0. Now, if you try to move all these numbers to the right or to the left, then 0, 0 won't be 0, 0 anymore, and that's not okay. So you have to actually physically move your graph. Where should I move it? To the right, pi over 2. And how, how far is pi over 2? Let's see, that can be the tricky part, figuring out how far that is. All right, then... What if I did this? Plus 1. Where does that move the whole graph? Up 1. And then how about a negative? What would that do? Make it flip. What if I put, and the official word is reflect, what if I put the negative here? Then it's an up-down or a vertical reflection. What if I put the negative on the inside? Then it's a horizontal reflection. But just a quick reminder, here's plain old-fashioned cosine. The beginning of it, anyway. Do you get that it goes down the other way on the other side? Do you get if I flip this left, right, that nothing is going to actually happen? So that kind of a reflection doesn't do anything with cosine. How about if it was sine? Would a left, right reflection do something if it was sine? Let me continue sine here. Now, if I left, right reflect it, will it do something? Yes, it will. But the weird thing about it is that it, it, what it'll do to it is the same as if I had done a vertical reflection on it. Do you get if I, whether I flip it left, right, or up, down, I get the same thing? And that's because, again, sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. And negative on the inside or the outside does the same thing. Strange, but it's one of our identities. All right. Next, let's go back to that tangent graph. So if we were going to do this 8 tangent of 4x thing, we got to know what base tangent looks like. Have, how many of you guys have already completed the tangent practice problem there? Okay, good. If you haven't, you've got to hurry up because I'm going to probably catch up to you quick here. So tangent, actually, this is kind of a misleading starting graph because tangent goes here and here. Okay? And then I go like this. And this is at pi over 2. And this is at negative pi over 2. And are there spots in between that are important? Yeah, because we need to be able to stretch this thing. That needs to be a 1. There needs to be a negative 1 down here. And where does it touch those spots? Halfway in between. What's half of pi over 2? Pi over 4. And what's half of it this way? Negative pi over 4. And that was what makes these two important spots. Why do they matter so much? Because when I put an 8 here, I've got to be able to change that 1 to an 8 and the negative 1 to a negative 8. Raise your hand if you had that part right. Good. Now, what if I had this 4 to factor in? Am I going to multiply everything by 4? No, nope. multiply all of these by 1 fourth. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes? Uh, on the test, do we point 
It's a good question. It'll be specific. Like it might say graph three periods of tangent. In which case, well, I better go further and do more, you know. Put my ass and tucks in here. And... You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. So then uh, we also want to remind you, and more than most, more than last semester anyway, we really recycle the stuff we've taught you. Like, for instance, uh, circle trig. Would it be a fair question to ask you where sine is negative? Okay. Would it be fair to ask you where is sine negative and cosine is positive? Yeah, there's a spot like that. Okay. I'd like you to draw this right now, and I'd like you to find for me where is sine negative but cosine positive? There's only one spot where sine is negative and cosine is positive. ASTC, how many of you have that written on your virtual paper? Okay, good. Then you should have said sines negative. So it can't be here and it can't be here. Cosines positive. So it must be here. Can't be there. Cosines positive. It's got to be down here. So then now within that, could you draw a triangle if I told you some sides and some angles and stuff? All right. So why don't I tell you it's a uh, this angle right here is a 30 degree angle. Well, you figure out what the sides are then. Did you get that across from a 30 is a 1, and then it's 2, and then it's root 3, but I just made the most common mistake in circle trig? Negative. Did I catch any of you on the negative? Be honest. There's always somebody. Come on. All right. Thank you for being on. Good. So then, how about, is this really where 30 degrees is? No. That right there is not 30. 30 would be up here. So where is it, really? And don't say pi over 6. That's not what I mean. It's a whole bunch of pi over 6s or a whole bunch of 30s because, remember, it's all the way around 2 here. It's 11 pi over 6, or 330 degrees. All right. If we did a triangle and we ended up over here, and this was a 45-degree angle, what is this spot really called right there? And don't say 45. That's not it. And don't say pi over 4, because that's not what I'm talking about. What's that actually? It's actually all the way around to here, which is a whole bunch of pi over 4s. How many? 5 pi over 4. All right, and then, quick reminder, by giving you the whole deal, what if I say sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2, and notice by doing that I said sine was negative, didn't I? And tangent of theta is less than 0. Tangent of theta is less than 0. Then the question is, what's theta? Find it. And again, if you get an answer like pi over 4, you're doing something wrong because it's not here. If my triangle was there, my answer could be pi over 4, but it's not going to be there. It's going to be a fairly big angle for an answer. Okay, let's see. Did you go, all students take calc and therefore sine is negative, means it can't be here and it can't be here. Is that how you started? I hope so. And then... Tangent is negative, so it can't be here, because that's where tangent is positive. This little sign right there told me the final straw. It has to be here. Uh, once I know it's there, the angle, I don't know, but I know that the sine of the angle is opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite was negative root 3. Hypotenuse is 2. And this side, hmm, got to think it through. Oh, yeah, it's the 1, 2, root 3 problem, or, or triangle. Now, what's across from the 1 is the 30. That makes this the 90, and this must be the 60. The answer is not 60. The answer is not pi over 3. It's a whole bunch of pi over 3s. 
6 pi over 3 is, would be all the way to here, so I'm going to back off 1 from that and say it's 5 pi over 3. Anybody see any problems with what I said? Anybody? How many of you think that the answer is 5 pi over 3? Good, because you're right. Any questions? Okay, so there's just a quick review of circle trig. It's not everything. Um, how about identities? We will not have a sheet for identities, but can you recall any of them? I just want to make sure these kind of some of the biggies stick with you. What sine squared? Okay, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to what? All right, good. And then, this is an interesting one. If you want to get those other ones, there's a snappy sayings. The one with the tan is what you seek, and then the one with the code is cozy. Okay, but and this is also true. I want to divide by sine squared everywhere. Do you think you can do that? Not when I'm proving something, but if I know it to be true, then I can do it. Since I know that's true, I can do that. And watch what happened. What's that really? The one with uh, what's that really? Coat is what's that really? Cosecant. The one with the goat is cozy. You know what I just did there? Okay, I'll let you go back to this and then go, what if I divide everything by cosine? What's that? Tangent. What's that? The one with the tan is what you seek. There you go. Okay. Now that's just a quick reminder about some of those identities. These are facts that we know about trig. Also, I can take this guy and rearrange it and just say, well, what's just sine squared? Well, we move this to the other side, and sine squared would be 1 minus cosine squared. And then 1 minus cosine squared, remember me saying, if you can factor it, you should. You don't always have to factor it, but you can. Because this is a perfect square, and that's a perfect square, and that's subtract. So this is 1 minus cosine and 1 plus cosine. All right. That is just some thoughts on that. All right, so now... Uh, we've been doing ones where you get a high spot and a low spot, and then you can write a wave that goes through them. You know what I'm talking about? So let's try one of those. Let's say you had, uh, this was at 2 comma 12, and this was at uh, 15 comma 1. Ah, that's not going to work nice. Let's make it 2. There's my 2, the high spot and the low spot. Would you please remember that the key to it is finding that line down the middle and then find the equation for me for this sinusoidal, except we're going to probably use cosine. Remember how I said cosine is the one that you want to depend on from here on? Okay, give that one a try and I'm going to get you a partner then. All right, so here is the line down the middle. And I'm going to also put in the x and the y axis because I think it helps you get perspective on where we are kind of. All right, so that line down the middle is just the average of these two, which if you add them together is 14, and then you cut it in half to average it, and you get 7. And so then, this, if I kind of make this a little bigger to see more clearly that that is the high spot here, that is my amplitude, which is 5. Why? It is 5, and this is always going to be cosine. I'm going to leave a little room around that, and then I'm going to have to say it's been moved up 7, so you have a 7 at the end. There's the easy part. Raise your hand to get the 5 and the 7 right. Good. Now, the middle part. In the middle part, you have a B term. What is that? Period equals, what's the formula? 2 pi over B. Anytime you're using cosine, that's what you would use. What if we made you make one of these for tangent? Then you wouldn't use 2 pi over B. You'd use pi over B because tangent's period is pi. All right, so the period, hmm, that's how long it takes to complete the comp whole cycle. Did it take from 2 to 15? Well, kind of. That was 13, and 13 got me halfway done. So did you double the 13? All right, so then you get 26 was how long it took 
This is like time down here, right? And also could be an angle. We use angles down there when we're in trig, but we're using time right now. So then this is uh, b equals 2 pi over 26, could, which could reduce to pi over 13. Raise your hand if you had pi over 13. Good. Then the last part is the shift. Because this isn't really matching up, that's where cosine really is supposed to have its peak. We move over a little bit. So that means in parentheses, you have the parentheses around it, you have minus 2 right there. Any questions on that? Okay. So, now, do you get it's all about the high spot and the low spot? And then it has to do with the time it takes. And we got to know how far it's shifted over. Those are kind of the key things, right? So, now we're going to think about this a little differently. Have you ever seen a caged animal that kind of gets into this loop where they... They walk to the end of the cage, and then they turn around, they walk the other way, and then they go back. And actually, there's a thing for it. It's, it's really sad um, if the thing's cage is too small or, you know, the animals can get mentally ill just like people can become mentally ill. Uh, the animal might just get in that loop of going back and forth for hours, okay? Well, that actually can be modeled with cosine. All right, I want you to think about it differently than you normally would. Instead of just seeing thing going back and forth, think of it from a specific spot. Like, let's say I'm standing right at the cage door, okay? And then the lion is going back and forth in front of me, okay? Then it's kind of like this. Let's say that I am at time zero. The lion is uh, 12 feet from me. And he's as far away from me as he can be in the cage. Okay? All right. So let's actually model this. Uh, are you willing to be a lion? Thank you. I look ferocious enough. I think you can handle it. Head that way. And let's say you are right there. And let's say that you are as far from me as you can be in the cage. Okay? And so at the starting time, he is 12 feet away from me. Then Mr. Lion starts moving, and we'll time him and see how long it takes. You don't have to be super fast or anything. Just, just go at whatever pace. And then stop when you are two feet away from me, because you're going to turn around and go that way. Okay, so ready, set, go. Okay, now turn around and go the other way. Good. So it, it appears that it takes him about four seconds to get to me, and then four seconds to get away from me. Thank you. You can have a seat. So then, do you get that I have just made some marks along here, and I get to four seconds? And how far was he from me then? Two feet away. Dot right there. Do you get I just gave you a high spot and a low spot, and it's just like cosine? It's just a different way to think of it. Okay? So why don't you go ahead and give me, I, I gave you everything you needed to know there. Even though it's a little more obscure, I didn't give you two of your nice little points. But I gave you enough to write a cosine equation. Write a cosine equation that models that situation. Okay, for the people that were kind of stuck, I'm going to complete this a little bit. Would you agree this is 0, comma 12? And would you agree that that spot right there is 4, comma 2? Then it's just like the other problem. I'll pause for a second while I finish. All right, so here we go. Dotted line down the middle is super important. I made these numbers really nice. 12 and 2 makes 14. This is 7. And, all right, so let's just jump right to the answer. What did you guys get? 5. That was from this. Cosine of pi over 4. That comes from period equals 2 pi over b. And then what did you think the period was? I'm curious. All right, and I agree because from 0 to 4 would be 4. You've got to double it. makes the period 8. All right, good. And then what did you have as your shift in here? There was no shift. Very good because the peak was at 0. Now, some kids will argue, but Mr. Server, you, you said that you should always go from the first peak after the origin. Do you get if you actually go to that peak, it's like you're adding on one full period and that's okay if you do this how far is a period we just said it a second ago 
8, and if I go there and I go minus 8, it would actually still be right. Because you're just shifting it to pi, kind of. Okay, anyway, don't have to have that though. In fact, you probably shouldn't have had that. It's cleaner to just have theta. And the last thing is it shifted up, so what did you have for that? Plus 7 is correct. Good. All right, now I'm going to make my story a little more obscure. Okay, so it's not quite as clean and nice. All right, you've got a Ferris wheel. And the Ferris wheel, I saw one in Las Vegas. It was monstrous. They built this new Ferris wheel. Huge. I'm going to say, I don't, I'm using nice round numbers here, but we're going to say it's three feet off the ground to start with when you climb into the thing. Okay. And it literally is like 603 feet off the ground. I mean, it's huge. It's, you know, it's like several football fields tall. Anyway, uh, it's kind of expensive to ride on this thing, and I actually didn't because I wished out on the dollars. But kind of wish I had now because it'd be a good example. Could have written it off on my taxes because I needed to ride it to be able to use this example in class. Dang, I didn't think of that. Anyway, would you agree that this person's height is going to ride up and down. I know they're going left and right also, but you just ignore the left and right part. Do you get, if you just think about this in terms of their height, they go up, then they go down, then they go up, and they go down. And it's kind of like they're just doing this. Do you get what I'm saying? Kind of like the lion that was just going back and forth, but it's going around at the same time as it's going back and forth. Girls, please don't talk when I'm talking. All right, I'm sure it's math, but I still can't concentrate. All right, so this is everything you need except what element? Time. So what would we know about a Ferris wheel? The revolutions. Yeah, and so realistically, you get on the thing and you ride it. It isn't going to take some time, right? So what if I just told you? This at in Las Vegas is this huge one. It's going to take a while because the point is to sightsee. You're up at super high and you can look down the strip and stuff. Uh, so I would say that this thing was probably a 20 minute at least round trip. From the beginning to the end was 20 minutes. That told you a lot. Now, I know this is different, but if I were you, I'd make it the same as the other ones and give yourself a graph like this and see if you can figure out two important spots, and then it's not that bad. 20 minute round trip. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second while I give that a try. Okay, my dad used to always say, if you got started, you're halfway done. Uh, not because you're really halfway done, but because then you can go a lot faster once you get started. So let me get you started here. If you didn't have this already, at time zero, you were at three feet, right? And then at times something else, you were at something else. And then logically, if we're going to do 20, but in 20 minutes, we'd be back at the same spot, right? So if I just do that, I say 20 minutes, I'm back at the same spot. That doesn't really help very much. So who's got something else? Yes. At 10 minutes, you would be at up there. Okay, cool. So you actually have three points to work with here. So I'm going to pause again and let you keep working from there in case you were stuck. Okay, so here's some thoughts. If it was at 3 when you started, and after 10 minutes it was at 6.03, you got your line that runs down the middle. I think it's at 3.03. .03. Do I have that right? Okay, cool. Then I've got your classic wave going on here. And that is a full period from here to here. Right, so I can go based on the period being 20 minutes. That's a period right there. So, final answer. Y equals, this one really wasn't as hard as you'd think. This height here, that height here is 300. Cosine of some period equals 2 pi over B thing. So I'm going to put the 20 here. And then I swap that. Did you get pi over 10? Do I have that right? I think. And then... Theta, and then was it shifted? Yeah, it was shifted that far. The x value of the first hill there. And the x value of that is 10. Minus 10. And then the last thing is, how far up was it? That was up 303. So, plus 303. And there you go. 
Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I did, I'm happy you saw that too. Another kid saw that, if we continue it on the other side here, do you get this as kind of like the flip of cosine? Because cosine normally would have its peak right here, and then this is just exactly a flip of cosine. All right. Some people get confused and think, oh, it's sine. No, sine would start right here. It's not doing that. All right. So I agree. You could have said it was a flip of cosine, but then what wouldn't you want to do? The shift. You take out the shift to make it a flip of cosine, that would have been okay. But please don't get fancy with me on the desk because I wouldn't even have noticed that you were right. I would have just gone, oh, kid forgot the shift, mark it wrong. But yeah, you were right. You could have not shifted it and made it negative and it would have worked. Any other questions? Okay. So what are the what are the key things you've got to get? You gotta find you gotta make it a wave like this. You gotta turn whatever the situation is into a wave like this. And knowing where you start is obviously easy because you always start at time zero, right? So zero comma wherever you start. And then knowing where a peak is is obviously important. And if, at least at a minimum you have to have two points that you can work with to find all of these things. And that line that runs down the middle is super key. All right. So now we've covered pretty much everything uh, that you need to know. And your homework for tonight is there is a Ferris wheel question right next to the other three questions that I gave you. I think it's the next slide. Do that one. But on the night before a test, I normally don't assign homework. So that's the only thing I'm suggesting is you might want to do one more of those Ferris wheel kind of questions. All right. And then for tonight, the rest of the time is just find old homework problems, uh, work through, you know, remember, most of the test is graphing, like we started the hour. If you're not good at graphing, that's something I would definitely work on tonight. Tomorrow is a Thursday, and that makes it my morning for extra help. So if you want to show up, uh, in this case, on Thursday, for me, it would be good. So I'll be here if you need extra help. Okay, and that's all I have for you. Oh, one more thought. I, we were asking about that uh, that uh, True 20 that I handed out. Uh, get that graded yourself because the answer key is posted at my website. There's the answer key posted there. Grade it yourself, but just grade it honestly because uh, if you act like, oh, I know 19 out of 20, and then I give you the real test on it in class and you get like 4 out of 20, I'm going to know that you were faking your score. Okay, So just do be honest about how many you really know. Because this is just your first time of taking that true 20. We'll take it again and you'll get better and hopefully we'll see some big improvement. Maybe you only know 10 out of 20 of them and you can go up to 19 out of 20. It's like on the other thing. So, Okay, that's all I got for you for today.